How to unflash Nepenthes from tissue culture. When you buy some tissue culture plants, they are in a sterile environment. So taking them outside the sterile environment will make them sensitive to about everything. From the light, the humidity, the germs, bacteria, whatever. So you better know how to prep your plants to handle being outside. Today we'll interview Mark from Australia and we'll see how he prep his Nepenthes outside tissue culture to be outside. So coming up. So thank you, uh, Mark. Uh, you will show us how you unflask uh, tissue culture Nepenthes. Uh, I never did it myself, but uh, I will learn from you. And uh, just to quickly introduce you, you are uh, Mark from Carnivaro on Australia. So uh, you have a website, I believe, uh, for selling a great Nepenthes. Clearly on the background, I can tell that uh, you have a lot of really, really cool plants. Uh, so can you talk about how you you grow your plants quickly? Uh, yeah, thank you. First, I would like to thank you, Brendan, uh, for having me here. I really appreciate everything you're doing here. Uh, yeah, I'm Mark from Carnivaro. I'm from Australia. 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 I'm from a lot of people from you, like seriously, when you start making videos, I was nothing. A few years ago, when I was having my small venture Cosa in the north end, and I was just having trouble getting for it, and then I was texting you and asking you so many questions, and since then, seriously, I learned so much from you. And uh, I you passed me, you, you went further than me, look at all the plants you have in the background. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no way. It, it just happens to have a big dirt. I can do something there. But I'm talking about the knowledge part. That uh, the thing you share on your videos, uh, you might think it's something you're doing for fun or something very small, but seriously, it helped so many people out there. Even people that you don't know, you never heard of, or like, you are doing something fantastic. And Thank you. someone like me, look what happened to them because of people like you. So I'm, I'm really. Feeling well, overwhelmed you. that you are even having the interview with me. I feel very humble and I don't know how to explain. <laughs> well, <laughs> so that's my cool. pleasure. So, yeah, what I, what I was um, saying is actually, I didn't start very long time ago. It was just a couple of years. But uh, seriously, my love for these carnivorous plants never stopped. And it's been growing and growing. <laughs> yeah, great I see that. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, I already have like uh, so many plants flowering, and I already made so many seeds for my own crossings. Wow, and, cool. and I would love to share everything with everyone, like my, my own feelings and experiences. That's also a part why um, I would like to make this uh, video today for deep basking. Um, yeah. Again, I'm not saying that uh, I'm going to teach everyone how to. I'm pretty much sure that there's so many uh, people out there they have more experience than me and they can do it way much better than what I do it. Uh, I'm just saying that I'm going to share my experience and I also had, to be honest, I had failed so many times with the fasting and I, I killed so many fasts before yeah. until I reached this way that works pretty well for me. And yeah. uh, hopefully someone out there can learn something from it. Exactly. Yeah, it's sharing your way to do it, so that's great. Thank you for that. So what we will uh, unflask today? Um, yeah, it's uh, I got here two flasks of uh, Ambularia. Okay, cool. And as you can see, there are still few in the plants. So even myself, I have no idea how to, what okay. to expect. So we're going to find out together. The first thing, and the most important thing, seriously, for any successful deflasking, clean everything. Uh, so many people, they think um, light, temperature, so many factors, maybe media. But for me, to be everything to be clean and st sterile, this is number one. Mm -hmm. Because these flasks, they have been in this container since the, the first uh, came to, to, to this life. So they never had any contamination, anything, mm -hmm. uh, and they are very sensitive. To, like, anything can get them. So... To make sure that your deflasking is successful, just make it clean. I already cleaned this table before, but I'm going to do it one more time just for the purpose of this video. Mm -hmm. um, what I have here 
is hydrogen peroxide. It's uh, 3% hydrogen peroxide. I mix uh, one part to three parts of distilled water, and that should be enough for this purpose. Uh, just make sure this doesn't touch your skin so much because it will irritate, not for one time, I mean for repetitive use, mm -hmm. it will irritate the skin. So we need really to be careful using that. Uh, what I need to do next, I need to get um, two um, containers for water. I'm also going to spray them, hydrogen peroxide, put them here. And this is just a working tray. What I'm going to do before I defrost them, I'm going to fill these two containers with distilled water. I don't recommend rainwater for this purpose because yeah, yeah. rainwater, it could have something in it. I'm going to use some tools to work with the plants. This also must be sterilized, especially the scissors, because you are cutting through the plant material. Uh, hands. Um, to be honest, if you clean your hands really well, you can actually touch the plants. But for me, just add an extra precautions. I'm going to use this plastic box. So now we're going to see what's inside there. So that's the tissue culture class. Actually, it contains, uh, I think, more than 10 plants inside. Okay. Usually, cool. this lab, they are very generous and they add more than 10. So we're going to find out how many we can see here. And unfortunately, it was a little bit uh, knocked down on the shipping, which is very normal with uh, the Australia Post people. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> uh, hopefully, they will still be okay. You might have some, some damage, actually. So, you can see inside. Uh, hopefully, they will still be okay. So, what I do, actually, some people, they try to pick them up using tools or by hand or whatever. But for me, I really feel this is too risky. I wouldn't touch them at this stage because this media, this gel inside, it's very sticky and it's very hard. And most likely they're going to break when you try to take them out. So that's the reason I've got these two mm -hmm. containers of water. Mm -hmm. So the easiest way to take them out, I'm just going to release them into the water. So you want the water coming inside, it will, and then shake a little bit. It will dissolve the media, and they will all come out. Okay. Easy as that. The water is at uh, room temperature, right? Yeah, just room temperature. Um, you could use a little bit warmer. If it's uh -huh. a little bit warmer temperature, it will be easier for them to dissolve. But it, I don't feel it's very necessary. Okay. See, there's already so many breaking parts, actually. Even I was very gentle doing that. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to shake a little bit to make them a little bit more separate. So the reason I have two containers because when, as you can see, when I drop the flask there, there is so many amount of gel also dropped with them. And I don't need that. I need only the plants. They should really be free from all these materials. So what I'm going to do after I release them, shake them a little bit. I don't really have to separate, separate them at this time. I just need to remove the gel, and then I will just take them. They will still have a little bit gel on them, but mm -hmm. it shouldn't be as much as it was before. So I'll just take them, and then I put them in the more cleaner water. Now, just to make sure, we have two stages of cleaning them, not only one, this one as well. For example, can you see this one, the small one? Mm -hmm. I was deflasking um, a low EA a few months ago, and I got also a piece like this. I was almost going to throw it to the trash. And then I thought, why not just put it in the media there and see how it goes. And to my surprise, let me let me show you how it looks like now. So you see this pot? This is low A. Uh -huh. You can see there is one, two, three. There were super, super tiny pieces that I was going to throw them. And now this one... It's almost like a established plant. Now the most boring process and time consuming and like really have to be careful at this stage not to break anything. It's just to separate them into individual plants. 
That's why actually I'm really happy you are with me now on this, uh, when I'm doing this because it's a little bit boring to do it alone. And uh, there is roots or no roots? Uh, it depends on the species, or it depends on the plants, it depends on the lab, how they do it. Sometimes you have no roots at all, like mm -hmm. zero roots. Sometimes you have too much roots, it's on some species. And sometimes you got like, uh, I think this one, the root amount, it's, it's good. Like it's really uh, what I expect from tissue culture. I don't expect more than this. Let's see this one, for example, that's all one plant. Okay. And that's the roots, as you can see. Okay. So, so it really actually depends on the labs or how they do this one and how good they are. Because this substrate the, the, they, they do for in, the, in their class, this one, it has all the nutrients the plants need, like sugars, whatever nutrients it has. And if they add too many nutrients, then the plants will feel lazy. The plants will feel, oh, okay, I have so many nutrients now, I have everything I need. They do not grow roots anymore. Mm -hmm. So that's that's how good the labs come. So they need to add certain amounts that it will help the plants grow in the fast. At the same time, it will also um, uh, like provoke the, the roots and help the growing more roots. Okay. Like not to add so many nutrients to a certain stage. And I feel like the, the leaves are really thin right like soft they are they are very soft they are very thin like okay let me tell you something that might surprise you some people will feel like look at this plant how big it is like the last thing you want to see in tissue culture when you have a big plant oh. this one has very bad very big chance that it will not make it than the smaller plants for okay. example this one is much better And this one. Oh, interesting. Yeah, actually, I'm just saying on my own experience. I'm not saying that this is the obvious, but what I, in my experience, because when the plant is will grow to this size in the tissue culture of flask, mm -hmm. it's already too late to be the flask. Like, um, because it's growing in this environment where it's sterile, there is no bacteria, there is no germs, there is no pests, there is no wind, there is nothing to make it strong. And then you take it out to trying to adjust to the normal conditions, this will feel a great shock. So in my experience, the bigger the plants, the bigger the shock. The smaller okay. they are, the most easier for them to adjust. Okay. So think about this as uh, like spoiled children, to be honest. Like if, if a teenager was uh, growing in his mother's basement, uh, play, uh, playing uh, PlayStation uh, for uh, 16 or 17 years, not leaving the house and then ordering pizzas or whatever stuff they're doing. And then suddenly you tell him, okay, now you have to go to work in this workshop. They will get shocked, they will cry. <laughs> okay. So that, that's my like point. It. So yeah, the bigger they are, it's really more difficult for them to adjust. So we will hope for this one. And as you said, after six weeks, we can get back to this one and see how it goes. The difference in the size between these yeah, two, they are, they are the same as last before. Yeah. It reminds me so, the, yeah, the seedlings when you, you sow seeds, and some seedlings uh, would just go way faster than others. Yeah, but as I said, the only difference when the seeds are fast, that's a really healthy plant. Yeah. But yeah, when yeah. they are fast inside the flask, yeah, they right. are growing in this uh, environment, and it will make them difficult to adjust later. So this one is perfect. For me, this is the, the perfect plant that you can get in digital culture. It got some nice established leaves. It got some really nice roots. And there is no pitcher, really right? Like, um, yeah, because of the substrate, because it has high nutrients. That's also one more thing. Yeah. Because they don't need pitchers. They already got everything they need. Fair. They will grow later. See, I can see this one. It still has some gel in it. Mm -hmm. Which one? This one we should really get rid of before you try to plant it. This should have zero gel because that's not going to do the plants any good. So I'm going to shake this one a little bit, a little bit harder on this one, just to make sure. And you see how many basils they have when they come from tissue culture? Yeah. Some plants I had before, they had more than 10 basils in one plant. And on the long way, most of them will probably die. And then only the strong ones will. will 
this day. Okay. So anything I can see, they have a stem on it. I will, I will try mm -hmm. to keep it. That's a lot of plants for one pot, like one flask. You can see like 11 wood plants, established ones, and just a few more bits and pieces. Okay. Okay, so the next uh, step after I sort this out, I will just uh, put them on a towel, on dry towel, and let them dry for 20 minutes. So you unflask all the plants? That's a lot for two flasks. Yeah, here we got everything here. I think the first one is already around 20 minutes, which is this section here. And that's the second one just uh, uh, came out. But I think by the time we report this one, yeah. uh, this will already be uh, uh, enough. Okay, so when they, they dried out for 20 minutes, what do you do? All right, so of course now the next uh, step, I need to clean them well, and then I need to report them. Here is my uh, potting mix. It's um, a bit of uh, sphagnum moss, uh, perlite, and a little bit of uh, orchid bark. Okay. And this one actually, before, the, um, before we start, I already microwaved it for uh, two minutes. So it has to be sterile. If you don't microwave it, it will have big chance it will get algae spores and it will get uh, like okay. a fungus or sometimes like paste eggs or anything. So microwaving it will eliminate all of these issues. So uh, because they are going to be set inside the dome, like 100% humidity for six weeks. Oh. And during that time, you know, It will encourage anything can happen. So it's better to have it sterile. So yeah, uh, some of the other plants, uh, like highlands, they they like to be on the dry on the dry side. They require more drainage. I like to use uh, cocoa chips, and uh, that's how it looks like. It has more air gaps, and more uh, like drainage quality. So some of the plants enjoy this more. And usually I mix this with a little bit of sphagnum and a little bit of perlite, just to, to keep it more solid uh, mm -hmm. um, together. But for our case, for Ambularia, uh, it grows on the river beds, on lowland areas, that sometimes the roots will get soaked in water for weeks. So using uh, lots of sphagnum and lots of water, it's okay. It needs to be in a very low light levels mm -hmm. because yes. again, on their natural habitat uh, where it's growing, it, it can never see the sun. It's always shaded by canopies of trees from other larger plants. Uh, it always gets very low amount of light, indirect lighting. So that's where we're going to keep it. So water is good for Ambularia, but uh, too much light is not really good. I'm using this uh, small pot for now, just for, saving space and i don't think at this stage they need any bigger pots you know for some growers when they deflask they like to keep them all in one big pot all together and this way they will um, like support each other and it will be uh, nicer for them mm -hmm. but for me it doesn't really make a big difference and when i put them in individual pots It's also much easier for me to, to grow them and I don't, need, I don't need to transfer them later. And they all don't really feel so much of a shock. And I guess when they are potted separately, uh, I do that the same for my seedlings. If one go sick, like a bacteria or whatsoever, you can just take the pot out. It's less likely to uh, go contaminating the next plant. Yeah, the exactly. next plant. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's more organized. It's uh, it's much better. Nothing will spread uh, around, and also they will feel happier because they're not going to be repotted again and, and again. So yeah. I I usually like to keep the potting mix under me, so not so much messy. Just going to fill around half or a little bit more. Then I'm going to take the um, so these ones. Can you see these black leaves or brown leaves? Yeah. The dead leaves. For me, I have to remove them. They tend to rot and they're going to spread fungus all around the plant. So it's better to remove any dead parts just to make sure that nothing nasty will get to them later. 
And as you remember before, I, I already sterilized the scissor. So yeah, and then after that, simple as that, just as you do with any seedlings or any, any other plants, what I like to do to avoid any um, scratching or any potential breaking of this plant, I will put the sphagnum first around the roots. Just make sure all the roots are spread and the sphagnum is between them. And then just make like that. And then put this whole thing inside the pot. You don't have to be uh, pressing it too hard. Mm -hmm. You still need to give the roots uh, some uh, space to breathe. That's actually one of the biggest mistakes for people when they're putting plants. They squeeze the sphagnum too much that it became very solid. And to, it will return so much water and it will make uh, it's very easy for the roots to rot later. So that should be enough for this one. Mm -hmm. So what we do next, they have to go into humidity dome. Mm -hmm. or six weeks. I'm choosing this model for now. You can go like smaller models or whatever you have, as, lo as long as you have any model that can guarantee 100% humidity, then it's mm -hmm. good to go. And quite so, high. Uh, I see that you use, uh, like me, like uh, 20 centimeter, like uh, this high. I feel like we, it needs aeration, like airflow. Yeah, aeration and sometimes actually they grow, they grow really high and they start hitting the, the top. So it's better to get in a, in a bigger model okay. at once. Uh, so before I put them, uh -huh. I have this hormone that uh, beta growth mm -hmm. B1. I can't really tell if it works or not, but it never hurts the plant. So I will just use it. So this one usually it's... Um, it's one mil for a liter of water. That should be enough. You know, if it helps, that's really great. If it doesn't, it doesn't really hurt because it's also a very small amount. So what I'm going to do now, I'm not going to drown them with this one. I'm going to have a smaller bottle because they need just a little bit of water, not really too much. Oh, you have because all the equipment. The, yeah, <laughs> the sphagnum is a little bit um, wet, so I we don't need to soak it too much. As I said before, Ambularia doesn't really care, but if you have any species like highlands, they like to be on the dry side and you put so much water, they will really rot and die. They cannot make it. So you have to be really careful how much water you add. For this case, I will just add a little bit until I see some water coming out from down here. Then that's enough. So and see now, uh, I can see the water is leaking already from, the, from down there. Mm -hmm. And again, I can't stress this enough. You have to sanitize everything. So I guess you don't open the tray for six weeks. So no, no. germ or bacteria under. No, no, I never open it for six weeks. Like mm -hmm. you don't need to every time go and open and check on them or because yeah, you, you have could to actually, resist. Yeah, yeah. They could get contaminated if you yeah. always open it and check. Yeah. But now since everything is sterile, there is very low chance that any fungus or any molds will grow. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, we are doing the right thing here. So yeah, just want to make sure that there is no excess water on them. Leave them there. What I will do next, just keep them sealed. Everything closed. Make sure that the tray, the, the, it has good quality and sometimes the cheap trays, they are open for these areas. Mm -hmm. So just make sure everything is sealed. Mm -hmm. And after six weeks, they are going to stay on the same tray, but I'm going just to open the vents for another two weeks. Okay. So total eight weeks. Uh, after that, I'm just going to open the lid and I'm going to transfer them to the greenhouse to let them adjust a little bit. I, as I said before, Ambularia, they need very low levels of light. Other species, they need to be in the brighter areas. But for this one, I'm going to keep it in a, in a little bit uh, 
um, not too much light mm -hmm. and away from the sunlight for eight weeks and then we can see how it goes. So yeah, uh, I was just going to show also an example of some tissue cultural plants that we discussed before. Uh, for example, um, this one is uh, Zachariana. It's, it's already been out of the flask for a few months now. And uh, you can tell that it already looks like established plants. And actually this one is already on the store. It's ready for selling. It has established roots. It has very good structure. And as you can see, the leaves, they're already thick and they are adapted. So this stage, you can tell that it's really a good looking plant. Okay, cool. Some other, some other plants we have, we got this Vichy eye. Nice. Actually this one, uh, it also went through the six week uh, stage and the two weeks as well. It, I think it's a couple of months already. And it's also looking really nice. Not as big as Zachariana, but it's starting to show some really like Vichy eye traits. See the hairs on the, on the growth point. Already got some little pictures. You can see here the the date when it was the task, it was 18 of March. Okay. So it's already looking a really nice looking plant here. I also have uh, a couple of plants that's really well established. This is Loyai. Nice. This is already three years old. How many? Actually, Loyai is a very slow grower. So you can see it's still small, but actually after this stage, it will start growing really nice. You can see the pictures now. It's already. Yeah, very nice. And you said uh, how, how old it is? It's almost two years. Wow. Oh yeah, that's yeah. Cool. Yeah, they are very slow. Uh, this one, I think it's uh, almost a year as well. This is Lingo Lata. Nice. You can tell it's tissue culture because it has this so many basils. Yeah. And you and can you, see actually you kept this picture, right? Hmm? You kept the basil on the main stem. You did never Yeah, really... actually it, it has it has around five basils. I took two out and then I kept three. As I said wow. before, for me the maximum is three. I don't want to have more than that. It's very beautiful plant. I also have uh, this Rafael Sienna. This one just finished the six weeks for the 100% humidity, and now it's adjusting. So as you can see, the vents are open. <clears throat> this one was discussed by a friend, actually, not for, by me. Oh, that's big. And it was sent to me immediately after it was discussed. Actually, this is five plants. Wow. So see, it was discussed on 25 of... Uh, Marsh, as as you can see here, that's that's the other method I was talking about. Like some people, they like to put them all together, and they still look all oh, they look happy and healthy. So, and they're just starting actually at this stage. When I received them, it was the same as Ambularia. They didn't have any pictures, but I can tell now. See, they already have leaf jump. So this leaf, actually, it was growing in my care. This is not a tissue culture leaf. That's a regular leaf. You can see the one from the tissue culture. It's very thin and it's wrinkly. But this is the, the normal one. It's more thick and have more color and much bigger. And as you can see, it's already starting to have pictures now. So yeah, I guess for today, that's everything I have to show. So uh, thanks a lot uh, for all that. That was fun, actually. <laughs> Next week, the follow-up video will appear here. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It's always helping. And until next time, happy growing.